indescribable. Greek word is charis, word charity, but the word grace. And it's such an indescribable doctrine and characteristic of God and who God is. And so we're going to talk about this for a little bit here, but how it applies specifically to you. Uh, many of you are going through something, and some of you are going through a lot of things. There is a thing that's called grace that God gives to stressed people. There's a sign that I saw that says, uh, I'm not stressed, I'm blessed. Uh, that's a statement of grace. That's a gracious statement, amen. And so how do you take the stress and make it to be blessed? God's grace. How does that happen? I don't know, but God's grace. Go back to your Bibles there, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look what it says here. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. I want to just look at here. First of all, Paul says that he is called to be an apostle. Now, I believe one of the things that kept Paul going was his call. Through the stony and through the, the shipwreck and through all the, the sicknesses and all these things, you'll see in all, just about every one of his letters he says, I was called. Called to be an apostle. Jesus is the one that called me. There in Damascus Road, listen, he picked me. He chose me from my mother's womb. He chose me, uh, born out of due time, but he chose me, and I was called. And I want to just, just validate, first of all, number one, that you're called. John 15, it says that we were called to and chosen to bear forth fruit. And he has called us, right, and chosen us to go and teach the gospel to every creature. So we are, we are the call. We're going to see a lot of things here that, not a lot of things, several things that Paul writes about that he's called us to. Now, for, just for a moment, just for a moment, church, take a deep breath, and it's okay. Whatever it is you're dealing with right now, it's okay. God has you here by his grace, and it's okay. And we're going to learn this together as we go through 1 Corinthians chapter 1, his first eight, we're going to go through the first eight verses today. And I want you to realize it's okay. And so right now, if you have some issues, just take for a second. I, I want to just talk to you this morning about the grace of God and be helpful for us, helpful for you, and just, it's okay. You have to know you're called. You have to know you're called. Somebody <clears throat> said to me, how do you know God's called you to be a pastor? Well, he's, he's, called. he's called. He's called me. How do you know? Well, I, I know he's called me. I, I just know my heart I know. It's validation of scriptures. After scripture, I know that. And prayer time, it's been validated, this and that. There's certain things you can question about your call, but there's certain things you don't have to question about your call. And that is what the Bible says in black and white about your call. And so Paul then he says, listen, I'm called through the will of God. And now also Sosthenes, our brother. Now look at verse number two of, of uh, chapter one there. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth. Specifically to this church, to them, this is to the church, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. So one of the first things you're going to see is that he's called us to be sanctified. He has set us apart, right? Unto Jesus Christ. Now watch this. What's the very next word? What? Call. One more time. It is what? Called. Called to be what? Saints. Okay, so here's something you don't have to worry about. You know that God has called you to be a saint. They say, Pastor, I ain't no saint. I know, but he's called us. I don't think I am either, but he's called us. And I'm going to explain that. Simply mean in line with sanctified, that he has separated us. He's called us to be separated from the world and from our flesh and separated unto Jesus Christ. So we know we're called to be saints. I'd also include to be sanctified. Now watch this. With all that in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, so he says you're calling upon the name of Jesus Christ. One of the things that we do is we call upon him. In prayer. Now, this is not a call, but it is a call unto prayer. And so we're called to be set apart. We're called unto calling unto Jesus Christ. And then to go to verse number eight and look at this other call that he's given to us. Verse, I'm sorry, um, verse number nine, rather. God is faithful by whom ye were what? Called unto the what? 
fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see us calling to be a saint, calling us to be separated, but he's also called us to be in fellowship. We're going to be talking with him, praying unto him, called unto fellowship with Jesus Christ. Man, this is a great call. This is, these are calls that you don't have to worry about. These are calls that you know for sure God has called me to be separated and a saint and separated unto him, and he has called me to be in fellowship with him, and I'm always calling unto him, and it's a wonderful life. God has, this is a part of what God's race is for you. Your call and my call and God's grace defies entitlement. In other words, this, I don't deserve anything in this life. Well, I, listen, I've been serving Jesus, so why isn't Jesus good to me? Or why isn't he better to, better to me? Well, hang on, start with the, the thinking in your race. When you start your race, realize you deserve nothing. If God gives it to me, I bless his holy name. If he takes it away from me, I bless his holy name. If I have good health, I bless his holy name. If he takes away my health, I bless his holy name. I don't understand why things happen, but number one, first thought, and that is this, I deserve nothing. God's call, what he's called me to be, what he's called me to do, the fact that he saved me, man, praise the Lord, I deserve nothing. Well, pastor, I worked really hard in my, my job, they ripped me off. I, the, you can fight for justice, that's all good, but at the end of the day, I realize I deserve nothing. I'm not saying you shouldn't get a paycheck for your jobs. That's not what I'm saying. But you understand all the benefits, all the things that we, you and I think we deserve. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. And Paul says, I know how to abound. I know how to be abased. But I am what I am by the grace of God. I deserve nothing. That defies entitlement. It defies pride. It keeps us humble. Everything that I have is because of God. Everything that I am is because of God. The fact that I can speak today is because of God. All by God's grace. It's amazing. Unbelievable. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and you're going to see if Paul writes and says the same thing. 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse number 9. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So he didn't, I don't deserve this. But look at verse, read verse 10, ready? But by the what? Grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Now, here's what he's saying is, yes, I did all the work, but it was because of God's grace that I was able to do the work. I labored more abundantly than everybody else, but it was because of his grace. And so Paul keeps going back to, I am what I am by the grace of God. All of his letters, you understand, God's called me, but I'm able to do God's call because of his grace. Now, I realize I deserve nothing in this life, and whether I get stoned to half to death, whether I get shipwrecked, whether it happens in my life... I realize God has a race for me. Paul, at the end of his life, and writes to Timothy. He says, Timothy, I want you to know something. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. And I fought a good fight. That course, he told Timothy later on, he says, listen, run your race. And run it with patience. Everybody here has a race. Now, let me tell you something about your race. You cannot finish your race. Paul, as he writes, I finished my course. There's no way he could finish it. Now, on, on the way, Mike, on the way of my race, things are going to happen to me. And on the way of my race, Penny, there are certain things I'm not going to be able to see. Am I right? Yep. That's true. And then guess what's going to happen? Well, Osborne, I'm going to get knocked down. And Tim, you're going to get pushed out of the race. You're going to get pushed out of your lane. And everybody here is going to get hit at some point or another. And everybody here is going to get sick or be in pain or 
just get knocked down some way or another. It could be somebody in the church. It could be a spouse. It could be a child. It could be your job. It could be all kinds of things that knock, tries to knock you out of your race. But you've got to remember, God has called you to fellowship with him. God has called you to pray unto him. God has called you to be a saint. Remember the, the, that, those calls that are black and white. Those things I know that God has called me to be and called me to do unequivocally, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that that's what he wants me to do. But guess what? I'm gonna, he's going to try to, this enemy's going to try to knock me out of the race and even use ministry or use the church to be so busy that I lose my fellowship with, with Christ and lose my prayer time that he's called me to be with Christ and lose my separation. I start desiring things of the world and my lusts and I get into addictions or sins and whatnot and I get, start getting knocked down and I'm not doing what God has called me to do. But here's what I realize. God has given me his grace to enable me to do what God has called me to do. The things that are in black and white, he's called me to fellowship and everybody and their mother is going to try to stop me in my prayer time and stop me in my walk with God and stop me from serving him however he's going to call me to serve and there's going to be so many things that will distract me away and get me out of my race. So God has says, listen, I'm going to, Paul says, I've given you a grace for your race. I've given you supernatural strength. I've given you divine ability to do what God has called me and you to do. I've given you grace for your race that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above the whatever you could ever ask or think. Why? Because of God's grace. Here's what's great about our Savior. His grace. Whoo, man. Don't forget Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. So we got saving grace. After his saving grace, he then gave us sufficient grace. And don't forget Paul writes and says, I, I want the thorn of the flesh to be taken away from me. And God said, no, 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 no. Hang on, Paul. I'm not going to take away your pain. I'm not going to take away this thorn in the flesh or this pain in your neck. And some of you have a, how many have a pain in your neck? Yeah. Paul, it was a physical problem. Some of you, it's a personal problem. You've got a personal problem, somebody else, that's my pain in my neck. But we all have issues. And Paul asked God to take away his issue. Take away my pain in the neck. Take away whatever it is. And God said, no, 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 I'm not going to take it away. But I'm going to give you not only saving grace, but I'm going to give you sufficient grace. He says, my grace is what? Sufficient for your need. I'll give you what you need. It's going to be okay, Paul. Pastor, it's not going to be okay. I can barely make it. Well, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10 13. He said, listen, there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. With that with that temptation or with that trial or with that pain in the neck, it will make a way that you will be able to escape and you're able to bear it. He says you can make it and you can get through simply by God's sufficient grace. After your sufficient grace, he has a surviving grace. And sometimes you're just surviving. But it's a, it's a grace that God gives and you're going to feel like you're dying. Can I tell you, when I was in the hospital, my dad was in the hospital, and people that have been in the hospital, and you literally feel like you're, you're going, you think you're, the doctor tells you, that is a surviving grace. It was by the God's grace that he was able to survive. And some of you have been through some things, and you, like a divorce or some serious health issues or whatever, and you just survived. You say, Pastor, how do these people, how do you, how do you make it? God's grace. So you have a sufficient grace, and you have a surviving grace. And thank God, now you have another one. This is a really nice one. I love this one. You have a thriving grace. Thriving grace. Remember when Jesus said, I come to give you, give you life and give it to you abundantly in John 10? I, I want you to have this life that's abundant. But sometimes you're just surviving. And sometimes you're on sufficiency mode. But then sometimes you are thriving. And man, it is, a, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. How is that? The grace of God. 
Man, it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Wow. And keeps my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Wow. How is that? The grace of God. It's a thriving grace. Hey, listen, Christian. He doesn't just keep us in sufficiency mode. It doesn't just keep us in survival mode. He does get us into a thriving mode. You say, how do you know that? Well, the Bible says it. I've experienced it. I've experienced all those graces, and I know that God wants me to thrive. But after that thriving grace, I'm going to give you one more, and that is a dying grace. If Jesus tarries, we're going to die. There's a statement that is true, and that is this. You're not going to get out of this life alive. If Jesus tarries, alive physically, you have eternal life. Your soul and spirit live for eternity. That's true. There is a dying grace. When you know Jesus Christ, don't be be afraid of death. That's part of the grace for your race. Part of your race is the dead in Christ. We're going to die in Christ. But the dead in Christ shall rise first. So what am I worried about? I know that my body eventually will be brought back out of the grave again. It will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I'll be glorified. All these things will be wonderful. But I want you to understand something. Christian, to those of you that are afraid of death, don't, don't fear death. Death has no sting, the Bible says. But we have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a saving grace. There is a sufficient grace. There is a surviving grace. There is a thriving grace. And there is a dying grace. So through my entire race, from start to finish in this life, I have a grace of God that gets me through every aspect of my race. But here's the problem with a lot of Christians is we do not use God's grace. We cannot fulfill the call because we don't use it. And God says, you have it. So I want you to use it. So I want you to understand the grace of God. Now, let me give you a couple, let me give you another thought on this. And look at this. When you look about the, the call that God has, this divinely selected and appointed thing that he's called us to do. Now, I gave you the black and white, but for a moment, do you know what God has called you to do? In other words, this, I know God has called me to pastor this church. It doesn't say in the Bible in black and white, Bill Shutt, you are called you know, to pastor the Bible Baptist Church in York, Pennsylvania. On top of what's already black and white, God has divinely selected you for a task. There are people that God has for you to reach that only you can reach them, and God is going to give you the grace. You do not think that you're equipped, but God, by his grace, equips you. You do not think that you are enabled, but God, by his grace, will enable you. You, by, by your own thinking, you don't think that you are empowered or have the power to do what you, God might be calling you to do. But can I tell you this? By God's grace, he will empower you, enable you, equip you, give you what you need and the power that you need to do it all by his amazing grace. Man, praise God for the amazing grace of God. Adam Clark defines grace this way, favor or benevolence, but especially favor that is powerful and active and has indescribable benefits and there's no way to describe all the aspects and the ways that God's grace ministers but it is favor from God that is powerful and active and I love that definition favor from God that is powerful and active it works in my life say pastor I got delivered Woo, man, thank God. Yeah, that was God's grace. God enabled you. God empowered you. Man, thank God. Man, pastor, I got saved. I got born again in the spirit of God. That was God's favor. That was God's grace. For by grace are you saved. Man, pastor, I made it through that trial and tribulation. That's God's sufficiency. Pastor, I'm just, man, I'm just, I'm just surviving. That's God's grace. Man, pastor, I'm doing great. Woo, man, I am, th- that's God's grace. And pastor, I'm ready to die. I know that God is with me and he's given me peace in my death and that is God's grace all the way through life. It is God's grace and praise God for his grace. This morning, I'm gonna introduce this as we go in the next several weeks, but the next several weeks about this and describing it, how it affects the church and affects you and it's tremendous. Luke 1.30, the angel says unto Mary, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. That's his grace. 
It's the same word, cherish, in the Greek. Luke 2.40 talks about Jesus and how he grew. And the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2.52 talks about that favor was with God and man and Jesus Christ. Again, cherish, it's this grace. In Acts 2.47, it says they were praising God and having favor with all the people. That's a grace. Favor with all the people. In Acts 4.33, and great grace was upon them all. This is the early church. And great grace was upon them all. You say, Pastor, how, how does the church continue to make it in 2023? God's grace. How does the church continue to see souls saved and brought into the kingdom of God? God's grace. How does the church see 45 first-time adult visits? I don't know how you do that in a church in York County. God's grace. How do you still see baptisms? God's grace. How do you see still lives dedicated to Christ and supporting missions and sending missionaries across the world? God's grace. It is God's divine call. It is God's divine enablement. It is God's favor upon this, this group of people. And I can't say it's everywhere, but I can say it's here, and I can tell you why. God's grace. And he has been favorable, so we praise him today for God's grace. I'm here by God's grace. I'm here by God's grace. I am what I am by the grace. I'm sick today by God's grace. I'm challenged today by God's grace. I'm bankrupt today by God's grace. I'm in debt today. Wait a minute, that's your fault. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I am what I am by the grace of God. He says in John 1.14 that Jesus, the word became flesh. He was full of grace and truth. In verse 16 it says, And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. His grace upon us. Grace for grace. 117, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wow. In Acts 13, 43, you see a congregation that got broken up. It says this, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas when they spoke to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And even when something gets broken up in a life, the challenge is, but you can continue. And you can continue in the grace of God. There is a grace in brokenness. There is a grace in devastation. There is a grace in all of these aspects of our life. And in the race that God has for you, there is a grace. We breathe by God's grace. We walk by God's grace. Listen, I eat by God's grace I get small by God, and I get big. All these things happens because of God's amazing grace. Do you, I, what you, what you got to know right now is that you are under the amazing grace of God, and he can do all these things through you, but here's what I have to do and what you have to do. I got to surrender to his race, not mine. Well, I thought I, it needs, wait a minute, stop thinking, because it's not your race. You were called in this race. You were called into the fellowship. You were called to be a saint. You were called under prayer. This is the divine appointment that God gave to me and to you. And then he says, Bill, I've called you to be pastor. And I've called you to do this. And I've called you to teach. And I've called you to minister there. And I've called you to reach those people over there. It wasn't your call. No, no, it's his call. Everybody here has a story. Everybody here has a race. Everybody here has an issue. Everybody here has an excuse. I have excuses. You got excuses. but I really have no excuse because of God's grace. God's grace conquers them all. And he says, Bill, I can give you the peace you need. Just surrender to his race. He makes the race for me. He calls me into these things in fellowship. He calls me into these things of being a saint and separated unto him, which we're gonna get to in the next couple of weeks. But I'll explain those what that means and what that is and how God brings us along. And I want to encourage you this morning, God is bringing all of us along. And I'm going to just give one more 
verse, if you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf. Now what's the next five words? For the what? Grace, Grace of God. Which is what? Given you by Jesus Christ. Watch. That in every thing ye are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge. Here's what he's saying. Everything. By his grace, you are enriched, supported, nourished, just strengthened by his grace. Everything. That means everything I have to surrender to his grace. I don't like it. There's days I want to quit. You the days you want to quit. But brother, the enrichment of his grace, the strengthening of his grace, the thriving of his grace, and I yield to his grace. His word is his grace. My time with him in my call and my fellowship with him is his grace and favor is pouring upon us and strengthening me and enabling me and just continuing on. And I want the moment that I break myself and completely yield over to God is the moment that God begins to pour his grace and begins to do supernatural things. And so I stop fighting what my will is and what I think my race should be. No, no, stop fighting what I want in my race, even what I want for God or what God should do. No, no, hang on, I'm gonna completely stop it all and say, God, I realize it's your call. You've called me to fellowship. You've called me to do this and you've called me to serve and you call me all those things. So it's your call. I'm going to allow, I'll just yield this thing over, good, bad, ugly, yield it over and say, God, I need you. I need your grace. Everybody here, you can thrive. You can survive. You can experience the sufficiency. If you're not saved, you can have God's saving grace. If you think you're getting ready to die, there's a dying grace. Don't be afraid. Allow God to bring you.